Okay, so here we are putting on the boot, fitting it on there snug. Now you could wait till after you install the fuel tank. Uh, some people put these into the fuel tank first, the boot, and then put the fuel tank on and then tighten the band around the, uh, the cylinder. But I chose to do it this way. You could do it either way. To me, I'd rather do it this way and ensure that I have proper installation onto the cylinder. And if you guys noticed, we skipped the cylinder and piston installation. Uh, I have several videos on how to install a uh, top end. So you guys can go back and check it out. It's a pretty simple process. So uh, there you have it. So tightening it down. You want to tighten these down pretty snug. You don't want to get overboard and strip the the uh the band or anything but you want to snug it down pretty good and i found that this is a pretty good angle on this unit uh for if you want to take it off later or snug it up some more so here we are putting on the fuel tank um, you want to kind of give it a little twist it kind of fits in there at an angle and voila and this is where you could have attached the boot first to the fuel tank and gotten it through there. And then you're about to see why you might choose that option. So get, getting it through the fuel tank uh, sometimes can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, but I'd rather struggle with this side, get it through there and uh, ensure that I have proper cylinder uh, tightness because uh, you know you don't want to you don't want to air leak. This is uh, hope you guys are enjoying the voiceover. Uh, kind of a new way for me to be doing showing my the actual work on the saws and uh, gives you guys better sound quality and allows me to record uh, and not have to talk at the same time. So I'm working it through there. You guys are about to see. I'm about to reach for something uh, not so blunt to push it in there to help me get it in there. That's a screwdriver. You guys don't use a screwdriver. Um, use like an Allen wrench or something that's not blunt. Um, I tend to be a little rougher with things than I used to be simply because I have parts on hand to fix it. So... Uh, if you've just got the saw kit, this is probably not a good method of what I'm doing right now. So uh, don't don't look at this right now. No, that's actually I'm being pretty careful, though, if you if you notice. Um, another way you could help that boot get through there is before you install the. Uh, the fuel tank, you might want to like pre oil it just a little bit to help it slip through. So here I'm putting in the anti vibe now we did skip the step of the oh the black rubber anti vibe. Uh, there's, let's see, there's three of them total, uh, on this part of the anti-vibe, there's four total, but three total, two that are the same size in the very front of the unit where I'm putting in the bolt right now. You just slide those black pieces in there. And then there's the one that you see me first, uh, put the screw in. Uh, it's a little larger, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the fourth one will go up onto the side of the carburetor housing on the other side of the unit that you're seeing now. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. And it looks like I'm I'm just tightening it, tightening it up. You guys can't see the, the wrench turning it around and around, but that's what I'm doing. A lot better view. Uh, a lot better sound. I hope you guys are enjoying this. You guys, look at the shine on that exhaust. Uh, right here, I'm not particularly sure what I'm doing. Uh, probably looking at something. No telling. Okay. So, here we are. I'm going to put the last bolt into the very front of the anti-vibe. And like I said, the two black rubber pieces that go into the anti-vibe, they both slide into the very front of the uh, crankcase. They're the exact same size. And like I said, the, the one on the back part of the chassis, it's a little bit larger. It's plug and play, you can tell. 
pretty simple. So look at the shine on that exhaust, guys. Looking nice, looking nice. Yes, sir. Okay, so we're coming around to this side of the of the unit. You know, it's funny when I do these videos like this. Uh, I have my toddler in the room or my wife will be in the room and we're talking. I've got this mute, the actual sound muted and then I'm doing this voiceover. But uh, there's no telling what's going on in the background. So I'm finally going to I'm going to tighten down the very back. Now, that's the only one. That's the large one. That's the one I kept telling you. That is the only difference of the three. And you see how the wrench is going a ways into it first. So the deep pocket goes uh, on the inside. Okay. So you see how it goes down there a ways before you tighten it up to the fuel tank. Okay, so that's the part of the rubber that goes in first. And like I said, it's pretty straightforward. I didn't show that part. Um, I just push it in. Wait till we get to the caps that get put on there. It's a short clip. Um, I struggled with them. They are tight, which is good that they're tight. But, man, get a little bit of a oil to make them slip in and they'll do better tighten these down pretty snug guys uh make sure you don't strip them out and if you do we got a trick for that so again tightening them down wanting to make sure i don't over tighten this is the part of the saw that you're installing that keeps your hands from going numb at the end of the day, guys. So you want to take your time with this portion. Make sure you got everything equally tight. You know, don't over tighten it, but make sure you got it pulled together. In a minute, you'll see me pull the saw up to see if there's any gap in the front. Yes, sir. Okay, so we've made it to that part. You see, notice that the other cap on the back is already on. It's because primarily you didn't want to see me cuss and holler. No, I'm saying it's not that bad. It takes you a second to work them on. It just does. And so that's good. I'd rather it be kind of a little bit harder going on than to have to then just barely go on and then come off. So look at the shine on that exhaust. Have I said that? No, I'm just kidding. Yes, sir. See, now you're going to see where I'm pulling it up. I'm looking to see if there's any gap underneath it. In this clip, uh, my video skills and editing guys are as good as my welding skills. <laughs> You'll notice that. Uh, but to the right of the screen there, I'm tightening up that last anti-vibe. You can kind of see it go into the unit. And I'm simply just wanting to make sure that I fill the gap. It comes up tight and then I put a little bit more on it. Again, if you tighten this all down too much, it'll you'll get more, more vi vibration to it. If you don't tighten it down enough, well, it'll come apart. And you'll kind of get a clip here. See of part of my struggle with all this. I look, look at the grimace on that face. That's a face only a mother can love. But I'm working it in there. And you, you, uh, you carpenters are going to about to like what my next move. Yes, sir. You know, I was like, this one probably went in the easiest, just to be honest with you. Uh, I struggled with them, the other ones. Uh, the other ones, you might try the trick you're about to see on the other ones. If you have such a device, I'm sure most of you guys do. I'm reaching for it right now. The suspense is intense, isn't it? Here it comes. Yes, sir, clamp. I just squeezed it in there. Uh, see, I pull it tight on one side here now. I'll move it over on the other side of the uh, of the cap and push down again. This At this moment, I'm pretty pleased with myself. I'm feeling pretty clever. And more... Moreover than anything, very excited to have it over with. Those things were troublesome. 
Okay, so here we are. Uh, oh, this is just uh, reaching in there with some uh, to to push the impulse line onto the back side of the carburetor housing. And basically, uh, so there's just a nipple there, just like uh, your carburetor or anything else. You just slide that onto the back side of it, and it goes through the wall, and and on the other side, the carburetor will fit tight. And that's how you get your impulse. If you're going to be working on saws, it's a good idea to uh, to get some of these hemostats. Uh, they're nice for tight spots. They're great for crimping fuel lines. Uh, that's a good deal. So that's the last part of the anti-vibe system right there. And what's important to notice right here, that's the ground, guys. Um, push it through there. And into the bottom part of the anti-vibe. There you go. I know I'm blocking you guys' view, but uh, it's a lot better angle than off to my left on the wall. So there's where you're dropped a bolt. You're not getting anything done until you drop a bolt. So uh, when you put these in, uh, notice I'll go down to kind of like a finger tight type deal. Pull that wire to the right. You see, I kind of pull it over there a little bit to kind of get it out of the way. This will be important uh, when you put on your top cover. And now put that one on in. And then once you have everything where you want it, you can go ahead and snug it all down. Okay, so the next part, you'll see I'm kind of pulling the back part of the carburetor uh, chamber there kind of to it. There's a longer bolt and this little keeper. You see that keeper on my right hand? So I put the bolt through it. And it's going to go into the, the anti-vibe right there. And that bolt goes into the top part of the carburetor housing thing there. And like I said, it's the last part of the... Uh, anti-vibe see and you'll have to kind of get it lined up and again if you leave your bottom screws there a little loose uh it'll help you kind of finagle it in there oh i see well, i remember there was a little piece of rubber that was part of, that was inside the housing when i pushed the bolt through it was keeping me from getting a uh, getting it tight so that little part you see the on the bolt that piece that's kind of spinning it's what puts tension onto it it really doesn't matter what angle it ends up at when it gets tight uh i wondered if it would matter as i was doing it later as i was putting else everything else together it didn't it didn't matter at all so see now i'm tightening down the bottom <laughs> Pretty, pretty simple. There we have it. Okay, so this next part, that's the ground. We're going to feed it up through that grommet. And in a second, we're going to pull it through the other side. This is to goes to the kill switch. It's me pushing it through the back side of the grommet. And uh, pulling it through. Yes, sir. Now, when it comes to this, it's actually supposed to come in through my right and plug into that. OK, however, I'm sorry, guys, I got kind of a running nose from cutting cedar yesterday. I brought it in past around the vent there to kind of get the wire out of the way. I brought it around the vent and in through the other side. It works great. Uh, spoiler alert. I've ran the saw already. It runs wonderful. Cuts out great. This is to kind of get, in my opinion, to get the wire out of the way, because if not, it's underneath the uh, carburetor. Works well for me. See, there's me sitting there feeling clever. Thinking, oh, oh will this work? That's a face only a mother can love. But it works great. Uh, and the, right here is where uh, 
I decide that this is going to work just fine. And I think I start tucking my wires in. Yeah, there you go. Tuck your wire in, man. And you just tuck it up through there that like that, and uh, voila. That's French for done. I'm just kidding, guys. It's not French. Okay, so here I had to pull the carburetor pack off. You notice I put that that uh, inner grommet in, um, band in rather. Which part did I miss here? See, get the, I get that in there. Reach over and I snatch the carburetor up. Yeah, it wasn't ready for the carburetor. <laughs> There's another uh, metal ring thing that goes in over those carburetor bolts first. In a minute. Uh, but I end up, I pull it back off and I put it on there. So there's an inner metal ring and an outer and the carburetor pulls up tight. I knew it, it was just laying over there around my red uh, magnet parts holder and I just forgot it. Okay, so you can push the, uh, the uh, butterfly open right there and just get that uh, linkage pushed in real easy. It's pretty self-explanatory. You push push it in with the car or the uh, screwdriver or anything, and then that thing just pops in there. It is really simple linkage to hook up. It controls your choke, of course, and your uh, and your fuel. Putting the bolts on that, of course, as I explained earlier, come back off, and looks like it might be. Do I, do you guys smell something? What's that smell? I smell something. Is it, is it toast? Is it eggs? Yeah, it's breakfast. I got the best wife in the world, guys. So this is where I'm eating my breakfast, basically. Uh, you guys won't stick around for that. But as I was eating, I looked over and I seen that other metal grommet and for the carburetor. Hey. <laughs> And I had to, uh, I put it on there. Okay, so this is all fast speed. Uh, pretty relatively easy. I'm putting on the air cleaner here after my breakfast. Look at the monster uh, drink of champions. No, I'm kidding, guys. Those things are bad for you. I need to get, stop drinking them. Okay, so I'm putting in a, a, a plug. Uh, not a big fan of the decomp, but not on a 70cc saw. Uh, Spoiler alert, it has a lot of compression. Uh, hindsight, maybe if it goes, I don't know, the right, somebody might want one. Uh, but uh, when the saw sells, I send the uh, it the way it is right now, and I'll also uh, give them an actual decomp. Just putting in the bolts. You see, you got two on the left side, one on the right. That one that on the right actually hooks to the cylinder. Pretty fast. Just the air cover right there goes on. Tinky, tinky, tink. Taking off the uh, chain brake bolt that we put on there for we wouldn't lose in the very first part. Yes, sir. <laughs> also installed the muffler. You guys didn't see that part. Pretty straight, straightforward. Two bolts to the cylinder. Two bolts to the bottom chassis. Two bolts to the top part of the... Uh, muffler here we go putting in the starter boy i wish i could work this fast all the time uh it was sure would increase profit this is a cool way of being able to do the voiceover i've got like i said my toddler's in the room my wife's in the room we're talking uh, about all kinds of stuff and having a good time now i can film and let you guys in on what i'm doing and at the same time, uh, uh, be able to spend time with my family. Here's where we put on the, uh, oh, the uh, log spikes. So uh, I use my 
needle nose to hold the bolt and put the bolt through kind of helps.